G'day, today we're making a small aluminium part, it's just drilled, turned and parted off. Here's a drawing of the part, that's a drawing the customer got except that it had his uh, title panel around it. Here's a drawing I make to put into the CAM software with uh, little bits marked out where I want the tool to be able to start and stop. Whenever I do a parting with a radius, um, I use a tangent line like that to blend it in better. This is a look at the DOS software that runs the machine. It's CAD CAM software, you can draw in it and you can use it to uh, create the code that you want to use to uh, make your parts. This is how the uh, part looks when you first start off. You can zoom in to get a better view of it. You must excuse the Moya sort of effect that I'm getting on the screen, but this is actually recorded with the camera off the monitor screen. Thing runs very slow when you zoom in a lot. You can remember these were made to run on 486 computers. This isn't running on a 486, it's running on a Pentium. It takes quite a while for the next tool to come up. I'll speed the next one up, I'll edit the delay out, but uh, there you go, it's arrived. They bring it from home each time, and uh, that's what takes the time for the new tool to come into view. There's the parting tool, done. So that gives you a reasonable look at the tool paths and what you're actually going to create. Now if we zoom back out, you can see we can actually zoom in and get quite close. Which is good when you've got small details that you need to pick as a part of the tool profile. When the thing is at its natural size, it actually simulates much faster. See the tool coming up from home? When the machines left the factory, they were actually set so that the turret went back to home each time there was a tool change, which of course is a very safe way to do it. But once you've got an idea what you're doing, you can actually go into the parameter file and make it change tools wherever you want it to. Here's a view of the part a bit further out so that we can see the turret and the aluminium block that holds the drill in place using 2011 machine grade aluminium. I don't tend to want to know about machining anything else. I mean, I'm, I'll machine brass and steel, but if it's aluminium, it needs to be 2011. This turret makes a real thunk when it goes back into place because there's a shot pin that goes into a plate to hold the tool in its correct place and it holds it in place quite firmly. Parting these off completely because they're so light then there's no damage being caused to them. Have a closer look at the tools in action. That's a coated CNC stub drill. I love the way they work. They're just brilliant. That's a carbide insert for cutting aluminium. That's using a stock removal cycle that's part of the CAM system within the software. And that's the parting off tool. Working quite nicely. There's a bit of a chattery effect on the uh, finish of the parting off, but doesn't bother us for this part. It's not a problem. And that's the finished part. Thank you for watching.